what you have to remember is that your memories are not in your things, but our memories are inside us. Hello and welcome back to our bright journey and we've got a great video for you today. We are going to be sharing why you should think about selling most of your possessions if you are moving overseas. This chair still for sale. Why has nobody bought it? I love my chair. Somebody has been to pick up the coffee table today though, so this is our new coffee table. This video is number six in our bright journey. So if you haven't seen any of the others, go back and watch them because then everything that you've missed is explained in there. So today's video, the main focus is when we sold our house, we decided to sell 95% of our possessions and we're going to tell you why. Now, first of all, we just need to set the scene because if you aren't watching from the UK, you may not understand how the UK housing system works. So we had an offer on our house, which we accepted. Both the buyer and the seller then engage a solicitor. And our solicitor told us that the process to completion could be 12 to 16 weeks, so three to four months. Now in the UK, neither the buyer or the seller are legally obliged to complete on the sale until an exchange of contracts has happened. And that exchange of contracts doesn't happen until after the first 12 to 16 weeks. Normally the exchange of contracts and the completion happens on the same day. So we were in a position where we didn't know that the house sale would complete. We didn't know a date. So we had to decide whether to sell all our furniture and hope the sale went through because if we sold it all we'd be left with nothing to sit on or sleep on and also nothing to dress the house with if we had to put it on the market if it, again. If it fell through, yeah. So yeah. that's setting the scene. So we were in a difficult position. The other thing was we also had to find somewhere to live afterwards because we hadn't at this point found a place in Madeira and the only thing we knew, the only date we had in our head was that my daughter Amy was getting married on the 5th of March and we just knew we wanted, I can hear a plane coming in so <laughs> I may just have to stop, let the plane go. Okay, so the plane's gone now, but we're actually still in Cyprus. We're here for another few days. If you don't know why we're in, in Cyprus, I'll link a video for you to go and watch so you can find out. So yes, we then, oh, what was I saying? <laughs> <laughs> the other challenge we had was the only date we knew we had in our heads was we wanted to move to Madeira after my daughter Amy's wedding. She was getting married to Josh on the 5th of March and we had had it in our heads all along that we would move to Madeira after the wedding. So now there's <laughs> a party in the background. Oh my goodness, let's hope the, uh, it's, your phone's not picking that up. So those are some of the challenges we faced. But we decided to face the first challenge of whether to sell all our stuff in quite a logical manner. So the first thing we did was we had a shipper to come out and quote for taking everything we owned to Madeira. So we contacted a shipper and he came out to give us a quote. So we walked around the house with us uh, to get a feel for the square footage of what we wanted to ship and how sensitive it was to breakage and so forth. So we did that and we had a quote and I think it was in the region of six, seven thousand pounds, six thousand pounds, something like that. One thing we learned from him actually, it was really useful because we really wanted to take some of our garden pots mm. and he said no. Well, we could take them, but we'd have to take the plants out and we'd have to disinfect them all. Yeah, so that was a useful thing to know. So instantly we knew we couldn't take our garden pots. So after the shipper came out, we had to have a serious think about what we wanted to take. And we had always thought we were quite minimalist. I mean, for example, when we did our open day, we didn't have to dress the house. We didn't have to move furniture out of the way. have to hide anything. No. no. So for us, it was like, oh, we're fine. We don't have much stuff. 
that we had in our house in the UK, something they called an undercroft. We never, we did have a loft, but we never put anything in the loft. But we had an undercroft, and in this undercroft, Andrew kept all his tools. Well, there was push bikes, there was cement, there was old clothes, there was it was all neatly in boxes and packaged away, but. It yeah. was too good to throw away, but we didn't use it. Yeah, there was surfboards, there was a yeah. mini trampoline. A bike rack. There was all sorts of things, mm. wasn't there? So what we did was, we decided, well, let's start getting rid of all that small stuff while we decide what to do about furniture. So the first thing we did was we emptied the middle bedroom and we started putting all the things that we were selling in that bedroom. and. I decided I was going to put everything on Facebook Marketplace and over the period from September to January when we sold our house I listed over 130 items on Facebook Marketplace. I think the other thing putting everything in one room does it makes you appreciate the size of the task. If you just start selling bits and pieces without seeing it all in one location yeah, you, you get a real appreciation of how much stuff you've actually got to get yeah. rid of. And we had so much stuff, didn't we? And th th there was a few things and I thought, oh, I don't really want to sell that. You were really good actually at helping me realize some things I just didn't need. Yeah. So that was a huge job though. I found the selling of things really challenging, not because of letting go of stuff. I didn't really find that a problem, but it was the relentless act of taking photos, putting them up for sale, make, getting the wording right, researching how much I could ask for it. People coming around to look at it, obviously it was still COVID at this time. So it was a really relentless task and it really did take me out of it. I think that is the thing I found the hardest about the whole process was selling our stuff. I can't believe that I sold my car. And we still had a few things to sell when we actually left the house. And but it was like five things that we, we didn't manage to sell. They were listed and luckily my brother's got them in his garage, so yes. we're fine. So that was fine. So then after we started selling stuff, we started and started to let go of stuff. We realised how freeing it was to let go of these possessions. And during Covid, we'd spent a lot of time connecting with each other, realising what was important in life. And it's not about the things you own, it's about your relationships, it's the people in your life, it's about your health. And we were feeling a lot lighter, a lot freer for offloading stuff. And we decided, let's just sell it all. Let's not take any of it. It took us a while to decide to let go of our sofas, didn't it? We had some lovely sofas. But we thought, why why take it? We didn't even know what house we were going to be living in, did yeah, we? Yeah, I think, I think the biggest thing that worried me, we had two electric reclining leather sofas, was that we were going to ship them all that way and they're going to stack something on top of them and they're going to be damaged in one way, shape or form. We paid thousands yeah, of pounds to ship something that then what do you do with it? Because selling it again or is, is not going to be easy. So yeah. best yeah. thing was... Just sell it all. So we have brought a few things, haven't we? The main thing for us was our gym equipment. And that was probably the pivotal thing that decided us to ship anything at all, because yeah. if you take that out... We didn't have a lot. We didn't have a lot. Uh, in terms of value, Yeah. it was just personal things that meant something to us. But in value terms, it wasn't much, and the cost of shipping it would have been prohibitive. However, the, the, the gym gear we had, again, wasn't a tremendous amount of stuff, but it was top of the line, and to yeah. replace it would have cost us a lot of money. He's been working very hard. I shouldn't have sat down. <laughs> Do you think you might never get up again? Get up. Oh. So this morning, Andrew packed up all the gym equipment, which was a big job. So yes, that made worked. the whole thing worth shipping yeah. at least a small amount of stuff yeah, to Madeira. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So that was the first thing. Decide what you're taking. And for us, it was great just to get rid of clutter. I find removing clutter from my life is very freeing. It removes clutter from my mind too. So that's a real positive. 
there's a couple of things. So in our undercroft, I had a box full of photos. Who else has a box full of photos that they never look at? And they were from the, when the kids were little, some from my parents and my grandparents. And I looked at these photos, I thought, I really cannot transport this box of photos to Madeira. So what you have to remember is that your memories are not in your things, but our memories are inside us. Now, I did decide in the end that I would sort through the photos and I downloaded an app called Photoscan and I scanned the photos that I really wanted to keep. So I now have digital copies and you did the same, didn't you? Yeah, and I think the, the, the important thing there also is that, you know, it, it's a box of photos we had that we've never thrown away, we kept for years. Now they're scanned, they actually get viewed and used on things like birthday yeah. cards with Moonpig. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we'll often upload one of those pictures that are now scanned that's easy to do, that before we would never even, they weren't, you know, like, there's too many to frame or, so it, it, was a, it was a good exercise overall anyway. And I, I don't know if yours, but when I looked through my photos, there were so many of the same and some with people's heads cut off. So it's a really good exercise. Do not keep those boxes of photos that you never look at. And the other thing that I found really easy to get rid of was books. So I did have quite a few books. I had offloaded my books throughout the years, but I still had too many. And I chose a few that I wanted to keep. Anything else I got on Kindle. And then there's a couple of apps in the UK, webuyanybooks.com and Music Magpie. We Buy Any Books takes different books to Music Magpie, so you can use them both and get rid of all your books, they go to a new home and you get a little bit of cash. It's so easy to do as well because they just come and collect it. So that was the books. We sold all our DVDs. Well, actually what we did do on the DVDs, we sold some DVDs, but then we were left with a bunch that basically nobody wanted. Music Pie didn't want, we, you know, nobody wanted them. So what we did in the end was we bought a little case. We took them out of all these big plastic cases and we compacted down oh, a box into, of DVDs yeah. into a small pack. Yeah, we Because did. we, you know, we just, we in the future maybe something, it was just easy to reduce them rather than just put them in landfill. Yeah. So we do have a few actually of our favourite ones, don't we? So, yeah. and who knows, they may not be on Netflix. They're not all on Netflix, are they? No. So, but it was also important to us that we tried not to just put things into landfill. So we would give a few things away um, friends and family had a few things. The other thing about Facebook Marketplace, I do just want to say this, is be careful about giving stuff away for free because we did list an ironing board for free and it ended up in a bit of a fight. I had some quite abusive message from a woman who had told me she wanted it and then someone else beat her to it. So just be careful of listing things for free. The other place I did sell stuff was eBay. So again, you have to be a bit careful with eBay because they can have quite big fees. Always try and get when the uh, offer's on with eBay. So the other thing is for us, we like to make a spreadsheet because then it makes it easy when you get the other end to know where everything is in your boxes. So that was uh, how we decided to sell all our stuff. The next step was getting the storage unit and the shipper. So I think we've, again, we've talked enough about what we wanted to share today. Yeah, I think the only thing I would say is that one, you can replace it, so don't worry. And two, you have to balance between how much it costs you to ship it versus how much it's gonna cost you to replace it. So you have to have, obviously, ex far exceed the value of shipping to make it worth it. Yeah. If you don't, why are you shipping it? So, you know, for us, if we didn't have at least £7,000 worth of goods we wanted to ship or more, and some of that is irreplaceable, why are we shipping it? Yeah. Because we can go buy it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the important thing for us is we really want to be very mindful about what we do replace now. We want to keep things as simple as possible. We don't want to have, we don't need two tables, for instance. We just need to keep things simple, keep our lives as minimal as possible, to keep this clutter-free mind, mm. our clutter-free life, so that we can enjoy the important things in life. It, it does focus your mind on what we now buy. Because, you know, we had a box full of Tupperware. <laughs> 
<laughs> and the whole box was worth 30 quid. You think, why? I mean, it's, it's a shame to put it into landfill, but give it away to your yeah. kids or somebody. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to ship that stuff. There is that saying, isn't there? If you can replace it in 20 minutes for less than 20 pounds, you don't need to hang on to it if you've not used it for a while. So I think that's another good tip. Okay, we're gonna go now. I will put this video together. We'll get it out to share with you. Please, before you go, do like the video if you liked it. Do subscribe and turn on notifications. Hit the ding -a We had a few other things. I'm just gonna speak really loud and drown out this music. We had Can you see that plane? Another easy jet plane coming in. <laughs> the things we have to go through to try and film these videos. It's really challenging, isn't it? So, wait for the plane. Hopefully the music isn't going to be a problem because we don't want any copyright issues with YouTube.